Ready, steady, go. Well, hi, hello. I'm uh, Magali De Vink from Zitomania by Le Chapebière, a little startup. Uh, we are making beer tastings in an original way. I'm personally country manager of Brussels. Uh, so yes, we're based in Brussels, but we're acting in different uh, regions as well. So um, the question about um, why did I start it with this? Uh, well, actually more than five years ago, I was still working in the corporate world, I was working at Total Petrol Company, it was really intense. But then I decided to change of life uh, and uh, somehow I came uh, to my passion and it was guiding but specialized in beer. So I started to make beer tastings and uh, the more I was doing it, the more I was fascinated. And so I decided to even take in courses and uh, historical knowledge about it. And so step by step I met some, some good friends uh, in Lille, in France, and they were having Les Chapebières which was, a, well, it still is a company also making beer tastings in an original way. And I decided, yeah, let's do that, but then in Brussels. So I chipped in and here we are. I officially started with uh, my startup, my company, in July 2018. Uh, and yeah, it's uh, going quite well, well, before all this uh, COVID and Corona uh, problems, but it was going quite well, and uh, I'm still continuing with my passion. What do you offer businesses? I know you do business stuff for businesses and stuff for people. What kind of things are you into and do for that people enjoy? Well, we're doing actually all tailor-made uh, beer tastings. So for individuals, for individuals, we're making uh, at home, so for a birthday or for a a bachelor party or something like this, definitely, but especially if you want to visit Brussels as well, we have our scavenger hunt game. So it's, um, it's a game that you discover Brussels, you're going from one, two, three, four bars in total, you discover Brussels, but you have challenges. And one of the challenges is to discover beer. So you will have blind tastings, you need to answer some questions about it, and there is only one group who wins eternal glory. So it's, um, it's a fun way, it's a nice way discover beer. We, my motto in general, in all beer tastings that we do, uh, we're taking all the marketing off. Forget entirely what you think, thinking about beer. Let's having a blind tasting and let's get focused on what you have and then we discuss about it and it's only afterwards that we explain what it is and this is how you're going to have really quite big surprises and it's a nice experience. For businesses, do you find that more and more businesses are doing this kind of group get-togethers for their companies? I guess it's called employee uh, bonding, called this free. Uh, are you finding a lot of businesses interested in this, or do you find, oh, beer and employees and maybe hats and people acting stupid? Yeah. No, well, actually, beer is getting fun. Beer and people are fun even in corporate world. And so it gathers people together. So it's a really nice team building in general. But so yes, we have a success. Yes, we clearly have a success in Brussels in, and in other countries like where we're active, like my colleagues in, in Lille, in Paris and whatever. Um, but of course, in companies, we also have the problem that some of them are not tolerating alcohol. So that is an issue, but still. Uh, still the huge majority is still open to that and it's not the purpose it's not a purpose to drink and to be completely drunk no it's just a topic that gathers people together and it's about the culture of beer because drinking is nice what you drinking for the love of God here in Belgium especially we have a huge culture of beer and this is what it is about how it all started why are we drinking beer how are we doing it and how it fast uh, it was uh, making our city, it is really important, and that is what we're doing. Yeah. So it's all over Belgium that you do this, or uh, and is it only Belgian beers you highlight, or is it all range of craft beers, traditional beers? So in general, we are independent. So we are independent, we're not uh, acting for any brewery. No, I have my preferences, but I really prefer to be independent in general. So I can do beer tastings with everything. 
um, even if I have my preferences, but I have no enemies. I'm not going to say, like, I'm rejecting those or I, I accept only those. No, I'm still open. And, of course, it depends to which audience I'm talking to. Um, I mean, like I said, it's tailor-made. So if you want to go in this bar and you only have those beers, well, yeah, then I'm going to do what I can. If I'm taking my own beers, I will propose a bigger a bigger, a bigger uh, uh, possibilities and options, of course. But I really rather try to be really independent. Yeah. And in terms of the history of Belgian beers, are you, you're big on the history. I once went with you uh, and a beer club on a walk through Excel, and we were really... There wasn't anything to see, but you brought it to life and where things were with old photographs, and you could really see how that was. Where do you think Belgian beer is today, both the craft and the traditional? It's a really good question. Um, because I would say that maybe 200, 300 years ago, beer in Belgium was not more special than in other countries of region. It's just recently, those last uh, centuries, that it changed a lot, and especially those last 40, 50 years. And um, here in Belgium, especially in the 80s, we had, of course, those really huge, big breweries. Um, but you also had small family brewers, and they continued on a big scale, it's true. Most of the little breweries died, it's completely true. But we still had a huge knowledge and regional beers. That survived somehow. And in, uh, since the 80s, especially in the 90s, they started to be really important. Um, and we loved our quality beer. We had, in Belgium, quality beer. And recently, recently, just to take in Brussels as an example, you had only one brewery, Cantillon, which, of course, we love. Cantillon is just, I mean, clearly the best. You cannot, you cannot say no to that. He, they were the only one who survived over here. And then you have this new craft brewery, a craft movement of beers, which is fantastic, but that is completely new. This is coming from abroad. And so a lot of people say, like, Belgium, beer culture, it's over. They don't have the first place anymore. And I get the point, because it's true that this craft movement uh, in other countries and in USA, New Zealand, and, and I don't know, and even in France a lot and so on, Yes, it's a nice movement. Yes, they do excellent beer. But it doesn't erase the beer culture that we have since, yeah, I mean, I would say a century ago, and how brewery culture survived in Brussels and in Belgium. And that is what is making Belgium interesting. What survived, that's important. So where does your company go from here to survive? Uh, you hope that the business will come back, or how have you adjusted? So, uh, with the crisis, you mean? Yeah. Um, well, I'm a really positive person. For me, in general, uh, this is a huge crisis. You need to accept it. It's not the first sanitary crisis that we have in history. I mean, in my beer tastings, I was always explaining it. You had the cholera. Jesus, man. But the cholera killed more than, than, than you can imagine. And that was in the 19th century, several times. It changed our city. Um, even beer was recommended at some point to, uh, to drink if you were sick. So I was talking about this several times. And um, if you look at a historical point, it is a huge crisis, but it will get over. You just need to be patient, keep positive, and it will come back. On the moment itself, it's difficult because you're losing everything. We lost everything. Yeah, it's true, we have zero income. Uh, now it's starting back really slowly. Um, and it will come back. But we need to be patient. And we need to accept and keep positive. Because for me, the companies who are going to succeed, well, they need to be OK. But the companies who are going to get through the crisis are the ones who are positive, And they will believe it will be OK. That is. So yes, we will be fine, but not before 2021. In the meantime, let's just do really nice stuff that we had no time to do before, like we're doing a lot of brewery visits. I'm more active uh, with my own uh, stay vacation. I don't know if that's a real stay vacation. That was correct. Yeah, I'm, I'm really into that. And I'm staycation, doing staycation. Sorry, <laughs> that was a point. Staycation. 
uh, that's the thing. So, and I'm even doing now more uh, tours that are more focused on uh, local Brussels. So that is, I'm lo really looking forward, like uh, going to do a visit in uh, the Basilique, in the Basilique of Kuckelberg. Uh, and then it will be Brussels and, uh, not Brussels, it will be beer and the church. So that is one thing. And another that I'm really looking forward, that I really enjoy everybody to do, it's uh, to do a beer tasting in the Museum of Sewers. Brilliant to understand Brussels, how the city entirely changed and then we're having a beer tasting related to beer and water, the importance of water into beer. So I'm a passionate pre person. I'm taking advantage of this huge crisis. And uh, yeah. Out of crisis comes opportunity. This is how I think uh, we can learn of it. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you, Magli. Uh, here's to you. We're at the py Python. Python. And Python. Uh, let's say hi to your dog. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for bringing your dog. <laughs> My dear Josie. Huh? All right, that's great. Yeah. Here she is. Okay. Woohoo! <laughs>